Hi there. Just thought I'd take a video of my 14-foot Viking boat with a vintage Johnson on it. Nice boat cover. Fits like a glove. My mother made it for me. I'll take it off and get seen sight. 1965 Viking 14 foot fiberglass job. Got it for only a hundred bucks. Pretty good deal. Need some new upholstery. No big deal. Did all the wiring myself. Electric start, electric choke, bilge pump, and front light. Newer style Johnson mechanical shift box. Let's see if you can see the wiring under here. There you go. When I got the boat it had nothing in it. Here's some electrical cable here from the wall. It's not moving anywhere, so it should be fine. Got a tachometer wired up. It's made for V6, so it measures about a third of what it should. Back here is a vintage 1957 Johnson 30 horsepower Javelin outboard. Grand total of five hundred sixty-two dollars back in 1957. A lot of money. Top of the line. Couldn't get anything better. This is exclusive to the Javelin line, this door. Normally normal RDE 18s don't have any of this chrome stuff. This is an RJE RJE18. I think next year they came out with the Golden Javelin, which had an alternator in it. Let me take the cover off. You can see inside. I took to start. And I put some screening on here to keep rodents out. This motor actually belongs to a friend of mine. I gave him a hand fixing it up and he let me use it for the rest of the summer. Real nice of him. Put a new carb kit into it and re replaced the entire ignition system. Points, condensers, coils, wires, plugs. Worked like a charm. The lower unit was in good condition. Water pump and everything. So I didn't have to do anything there. Hadn't, hadn't run for about 20 to 30 years before I fixed it. Still got the old pressurized fuel system. Works fine. Okay, I'll, I'll crank it up for a moment. Throttle up, neutral. Choke. You should hear that. There's the choke. Okay, I'll put the cover back on and go for a little drive. There. Yep, top of the line outboard in 57. Or is it 56? I think it's 56 actually. Javelin.
real nice. So much nicer than the new ones, you know. <laughs> That's what somebody told me once you get it running. They might use more fuel, but it runs a lot better than all those new engines you get. and build stump and the old pressurized fuel tank. Let me shut it off for a moment. It's a bit noisy. Your idle's nice, doesn't it? As I was saying about the, this is the old pressurized fuel tank. When you undo the cap you should hear a good hiss, which means the whole thing is airtight. It has to be airtight because the way this works, unlike a drinking straw which sucks the fuel up, imagine you put a plunger in the glass and you push the fuel up the straw. So the whole tank has to be airtight, so the pressure coming down the air hose from the engine pushes the fuel through the fuel line back into the engine. If you don't hear a hiss, it means there's a leak somewhere near it. You probably have to keep pumping the primer all the time to get it to run. This is a 6 US gallon tank, 5 imperial gallons, 23 liters. Seems to give about 2 hours of run time at two hours of cruising at wide open throttle. That's a rough estimate. Have to run a bit more fuel through it before I can nail it down. And at about 30 miles per hour, that's about 60 miles per tank. 
divided by six is about 10 miles per gallon. Just something to keep in mind, gives you an idea how much fuel to take along on a trip. And I should mention about the fuel ratio mixture, gas to oil. I don't know about the newest ones beyond the eight 1980s, but all the older ones, there's two mixtures, 24 to 1 and 50 to 1. And I got this straight out of the Johnson shop manual. All engines before 1964 used 24 to 1 mixture. All the engines during and after 64 use a 50 to 1 mixture after being broken in at a 24 to 1 mixture. So this being a 1956 engine used the 24 to 1 mixture. There's no other mixture used. So if you have an older engine running on 24 to 1 before 1964, 1964 and later use 50 to 1. I should mention about the wiring. I did all the wiring in the boat, but my father did give me some pointers on it. And he did all the wiring in the engine, which turned out to be a little more complicated than you might think at first. I decided to put the wiring in through this bottom hole here, instead of through, the, through here, because it just was easier, you could tie it down better. I didn't have the I didn't have the original we couldn't find the original junction box so I just used an ordinary automobile starter solenoid here. Now I know they say not to do that, but the way I've got it wired up it works fine. I just skipped putting the throttle cutout. I didn't bother wiring that in because that was too difficult to wire in. It's case grounded so I couldn't use it. Just remember not to crank it at full throttle. Works out nicely. My father mounted it so close to the starter, they didn't have to use a wire. Just use this piece of c copper, copper strip. It's a nice shrink tubing and I put a big plus on it, so you wouldn't mistake what it is. <laughs> Bus bar. Works pretty good. And these are the new style control box cables, but they say that you're supposed to replace these trunnions these new style cables and I found it wouldn't fit at first you're supposed to these uh, these adjustable ones won't fit in the older trunnions so I did a hack job of it by just grabbing the e end of the ears on the pliers and just pulling them out slowly until this fits and it works fine maybe it's not perfect but it'll do do it slowly though so they don't break off I remember when I first started it up, I opened it up to full throttle and it was just trundling along at medium speed. I was amazed at the difference the adjust these carb adjustments can make. Just simply turning this down to lean and it took off like it opened up the throttle. I think it's open only about a quarter of a turn, that's all, for this particular engine. That's a nice little tour. Let's see if it starts up. That was fun, wasn't it? I never driven a boat so fast until this summer. Nice vintage Johnson. Well, thanks for watching. See you later.